On today's throwback, while we're having a look at the McFarlane Toys Movie Maniacs Series 5, we're looking today at the Tooth Fairy. One of the older figures that Spot has reviewed decided to go back and give it another new coat of paint, as it were. Shoot this in high def. But uh, we have the Tooth Fairy, and I believe this Tooth Fairy actually had two variants. One of which Spot has the open mouth version of Tooth Fairy, and one of which being the closed mouth that you can see depicted. There's my cat in the background. Depicted in the closed mouth version of the Tooth Fairy there. So we turn the package around. The other figures that would have made up this series of Movie Man X, Series 5, we would have had the Lord of Darkness from Legend, Jason Voorhees from Jason X, Sarah Connor from T2, the Endoskeleton from T2, and the Jin from Wishmaster. It says that the Tooth Fairy is from the movie The Tooth Fairy. Now, I know there was a The Tooth Fairy movie, a very low grade, I think it was a B movie, I don't even know if they even made it to theater, and I think there was also Darkness Falls. Pretty sure that was the name of the title of the movie, and it had to do with the Tooth Fairy as well. I don't think it was this Tooth Fairy, but it's it's all over the place, who knows. Um, this would have come also from 2002, like for all in toys. What I'm going to do is take a break, I'm going to get this opened up, and whatever movie this, this character is from, we're going to have a better look at the Tooth Fairy. Don't go anywhere, stay tuned. With the Tooth Fairy and with other Movie Maniac figures, you'll get yourself a display base as a skeletal base of bones and debris. And the poster will sit loosely, loosely within that frame. You can apply a little bit of pressure on the back, but it doesn't really stay all that well. Not to the level of the original ones that went all the way around the poster. And it says the Tooth Fairy. I think if you look up on YouTube, there was a trailer for the Tooth Fairy. Again, perhaps it made it... It was one of those movies that was going to come out to theaters, and for some reason, McFarlane... Whoops! <laughs> it was the Tooth Fairy. Um, it was one of those movies that McFarlane Toys got on, assuming it was going to be a big property, and it just went to obscurity. Or again, it was the Tooth Fairy from Darkness Falls. But I don't recall the Darkness Falls Tooth Fairy looking like this. At any rate, uh, poster... It's not really much of a poster, it's just this. I think the, what was the catchphrase for the tagline was, an eye for an eye, your soul for a tooth. I think that was the... Anyways, having a look at the Tooth Fairy. I mean, it's a nice looking figure, whatever movie this figure is depicted from. Um, I bought this figure assuming, not so much what movie it was coming from, but I just bought it because it looked cool. It's a very gruesome, gruesome looking face. As far as I know, also, again, this is a, a variant. The other version had the closed mouth, but this one certainly has a character to it. It's really grotesque. Kind of looks like something cross between the suckers in uh, Blade 2, uh, the Knight... Was it that movie with the airplane vampire guy? Ah, uh, I can't remember the name of the movie. Anyways, it's irrelevant. Um, the detail on the fa that detail on the face is quite nice, very grotesque. I like the multiple rows of teeth going on there. You can imagine that that would likely imagine if that my finger was the head that likely would like consume a face or a head. It would come for not only your teeth, but everything else that was attached to your face at the time. Um, the detail on the chest is nice. It looks like there is some tattoo work or some sort of scribing done on the actual chest. Some scarring going on there as well. It's a really, really nicely detailed figure as well. The hair is, is solid also. And when we pan back a bit, you can see the Tooth Fairy has an opaque uh, skirt. 
you can actually see it's somewhat opaque, somewhat translucent, I should say. You can see my finger behind it. It's got some nice age. It looks like something that she has been wearing for a long time, and it's just, it's just decayed. Maybe it's made out of mucus. I don't know. Maybe it's not even fabric. It's just mucus. Mm, a mucus dress. That sounds nice. Uh, she is pre-posed, but surprisingly, she actually has a lot of articulation. The one hand is kind of pointing, kind of looking like she could be holding something, and the other one is, I don't know what it's doing. It could be reaching out for your tooth or your soul. And then she's got this kind of collared extension of her... It looks like it's coming out of her back, so I don't know if it's if that's something that we should be concerned with. It, it does move, though I really don't know why. You can get a little bit of movement going on in there. Again, your guess is as good as mine as to why, really. And then the other cool aspect of it is her back cape, if you will. But it also serves as her wings, her folded back wings. You can also retract them out. And that's a really nice detail, a nice way to pose the figure on the shelf. Granted, it would take up a lot of space. You'd have to have a couple of figures probably in front. But uh, the details on the wings are done exceptionally well. Multiple colors of paint. It looks like leaves. And also, you can see my fingers there too. It's translucent as well. But I think the wings are definitely the nicest aspect of this figure. It's very, very solid. It's the true testament of a figure when you don't know exactly what the figure is depicted from, but you buy it just because it looks nice. Tooth Fairy caught my attention when I initially found her in shelves, and I picked her up just because she had a really neat design to her. In the way of her articulation, the Tooth Fairy has a swivel in the head, it doesn't look like you can move her head up and down, which is a shame. I would have liked if her mouth would have been movable, but due to the sculpt, I can understand why that wouldn't be the case. Her arms, surprisingly, are on a pin and socket, so they move not only out, but they also move back and forth. She has a rotation in the, in the uh, bicep area. She has a rotation in the hands. Nothing it appears in the waist, but likely sculpt-wise, that would make some sense. Uh, the legs go forward. Uh, so much, so much not so much forward, but you still can get a little bit of movement forward out. And then she does also have a hinge in the foot. The way she sculpted is if it looks like she should have had something attached to her back where you could actually have her floating. Especially with the fact that you can have her feet bent back as you can. But she didn't come with any sort of stand, nothing which to hold her. So you might have to just kind of suspend her from a string. If you were really a really mean brother, you could hang this over your sister's bed, scare the pajibis out of her. Just don't tell her that I did it. Whatever you do, that's the last thing you want to be doing is telling her that I did that. Let's move this poster out of the way. Um, yeah, it's just a really neat figure. It's a neat figure, and uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to go back to reviewing this one again is just because this is one of those figures that, of the set, of the set of this series, which I think, again, was Series 5, Tooth Fairy was a peg warmer. Everybody was clamoring to get the Legend Darkness to get the Jason X. I think Jason X was the big seller, and Sarah Connors were the most expensive figure with just because of the three variants, the two variants in the main figure. Tooth Fairy just sat. Tooth Fairy really wasn't a big pickup for a lot of people. And um, I think, you know what, it's a figure that you can go back now and get, for, for starters, fairly inexpensive. You can see my finger there, fairly inexpensive, and uh, fairly easy to come by. So I think this figure has a character to it that, you know, if you're going back and you're just a horror collector and you just like horror figures, it's a good figure to go back and pick up just as something that looks nice on a shelf. Even if, again, we're not quite cer certain what movie she's originated from, uh, she is a really neat figure to have in your collection. Today's throwback, we're having a look at the McFarlane Toys Movie Maniacs Series 5, we're looking today at the Tooth Fairy, Tooth Fairy. I didn't actually stutter. I, again, she's from whatever movie it might be. Thanks for watching, as you always do, guys. Certainly stick around. There are more throwbacks heading your way. I'll see you guys next time. Hey.